If you've been with us uh, the last several hours of our coverage this morning, you know that uh, not only did details develop overnight in terms of the identity of the suspected shooter, but we've been uh, telling you the latest reporting uh, from CBS News all morning long as more details continue to surface. We are joined now by CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga, uh, who's got extensive background and knowledge about the Secret Service. You've also been essentially up uh, overnight gathering details. What is the very latest that you're hearing from your sources about this investigation. Yeah, so right now, FBI and law enforcement have made contact with the family of the 20-year-old suspect, uh, Thomas Crooks, Secret Service and FBI uh, locking down a perimeter surrounding the suspect's home, looking to speak with his parents right now, collecting information from his neighborhood, his other uh, contacts. There is no indication at this point of a nexus to foreign terrorism. In fact, law enforcement know very little about this individual. He is not on the radar as of yet. This is, of course, a very active uh, investigation, and so more as this unfolds. He used an AR-15. Uh, semi-automatic weapon. Uh, no other weapons at this point, but they continue to search for more indications of another weapon. No indications that he worked with anyone at this point, but this is an ongoing investigation. Looks and smells like a lone wolf attack at this point. Um, of course, law enforcement is being uh, very, very careful in this investigation. They want to dot all their I's, cross all their T's. There is a recognition that this is a failure on the part of law enforcement and the U.S. Secret Service. Uh, in terms of what the actual uh, security was at the event, we are told that the perimeter that was set up by Secret Service is similar to other events that uh, the former president has put on other rallies, uh, that there was a sort of surge of resources back in June as part of what Secret Service calls its CNOS or its candidate nominee operations section. More resources were given to the former president's uh, security detail. Of course, he's always had Secret Service drones, robotic dogs, and essentially counter sniper teams. So we're told that there were four counter sniper teams there at the rally, four teams of two. So that's a shooter and a spotter. It was those teams that spotted Thomas Crooks when he climbed up the vestibule. And we saw those images of him lying flat with the weapon within seconds of those shots firing out. Those those counter sniper teams fired back, uh, neutralizing the threat there. But a lot of questions regarding why this individual was not spotted before he got up on the vestibule. And we're told that there was a bystander report to local police, uh, Butler County Police. At some point, officials lost track of the suspect and later found him, saw him as he emerged and climbed onto that shed outside of the Secret Service perimeter. Uh, but of course, this is an area that counter sniper teams are scanning with an eyeline of them. Uh, I was going to ask you, my question is about those questions that you just mentioned, uh, because with the FBI taking over this investigation, the Secret Service being part of, I'm guessing, what will be an in investigation into how this was able to happen. So is it now the FBI's job to help answer those questions about why somebody was so close to the perimeter and able to gain access to that roof, will they be investigating the work that the Secret Service has been doing? The FBI right now is the lead on the investigation into the suspect and the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. That is their primary role. However, as part of this investigation, they will be looking into the timeline, the TikTok. What did Secret Service know when? What did local law enforcement partners know when? And why was it that this individual was able to to get within 300, 400 feet and frankly, a clear uh, eyeline to where the president was addressing rally goers on that day. Secret Service also doing its own internal investigation. But at this point, yeah, there was a decision made last night to hand the investigation over from Secret Service to the FBI. And in part because I believe Frankly, the Secret Service will be scrutinized as part of this ongoing probe. So I wonder, Nicole, if you can give us a sense as we look at those images from the rally itself. Uh, some people may be wondering about some of the protective measures on the stage itself. Yeah. Because there are some protective measures that may be essentially invisible to lay people who may not realize that some of the things they are seeing actually serve a protective function. Can you talk about that? Yeah, and our viewers who saw images of the former president last night likely saw he had scrapes on his face. I'm 
I'm told those were from the teleprompter, which actually serves as a protective device. Those glass teleprompter screens uh, do serve as additional protection for the former shield, president, a shield essentially. Yeah. Uh, I'm told there were no other sort of aerial or plexiglass shields, but those are considered uh, protective measures. In addition to that, you might have seen American flag banners around the stage. Those are steel in addition to the podium. So when we saw Secret Service, the protective detail really hunkered down with the former president in the seconds after those uh, gunshots went off. That is because they were trying to get him behind that protective steel. Well, can thank you enough for being here and joining our coverage and for your reporting this morning. Yeah, we appreciate really your hard work yeah. overnight. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. We'll be right back.